With modern telescopes, we can study comets in more detail than ever before. But to really understand them, we need to get close to the very heart of a comet, its nucleus. One of the holy grails of comet science is to really understand what is in a comet's nucleus. What is actually on the surface? What is the chemical composition? What are the characteristics of the rocks and the materials, the volatiles that are on that surface? The nucleus is the fundamental building block of the solar system that we as scientists really want to investigate. That's where the mysteries really are. There have been more than a dozen missions to comets in the past three decades. Every one of them has been a revelation. We've learned about the chemistry of them. We've learned about the physical interaction they have with the sun. We've learned about their physical surface, their terrain, and how they're different even if you were to go from one spot on a comet to another. So we're really learning that these things are worlds unto themselves. Scientists thought comets were white, like a snowball. That changed in 1986, when the Giotto space probe beamed back these images of Halley's Comet. For the first time in history, we had a snapshot of the very center of that comet, that comet that entered human history on many occasions, and we found a cold, dead world. We found an object shaped like a peanut. Halley was no snowball. A thick layer of black dust covered its surface. There were pits and hills, and Halley was nine miles long, far bigger than anyone expected. Scientists thought that all comets were the same. They were wrong. In 2004, the Stardust probe flew into the tail of comet Vilt 2 and captured thousands of tiny dust particles. When Stardust brought those samples back on Earth, we realized that, in fact, every comet is a unique object. Just like every planet is different, it looks like every comet is different. It has its own history to tell. Different materials went into its formation, different heat sources were injected into its interior, different chemical processes and geologic processes occurred. Each one is a unique world waiting to be explored. Some comets are truly strange. These are real images of Hartley II. A comet so weird, it snows. It's so strange. We were able to see that there are golf ball sized chunks of dry ice that are following the comet around up to a million miles away from the nucleus. This thing is just making a big mess. Harley 2 is just amazing. It looked like you were in the middle of a snow globe and you shook it up and there are all these little things, kind of like flies buzzing around food, just kind of floating out there. It's just not right. Hartley 2 is a hyperactive comet. It tumbles faster and spits out more debris than most others its size. Comets are alien worlds. On Comet Temple 1, there are smooth plateaus, craters and cliffs 60 feet high. Layers of rock lie on top of each other like a stack of pancakes. Each comet seems to have its own unique history. Temple One gave scientists their biggest breakthrough. In 2005, the Deep Impact Space Probe slammed a projectile into its surface. The explosion dug out a crater 150 yards across. Talk about a spectacular 4th of July. I mean, can you imagine anything better? We actually blew a hole in a comet. I mean, that's gotta be one of the more amazing things that NASA has ever done. The material the impact ejected allowed us to see inside a comet's nucleus for the first time. It was completely unexpected. We found things like rubies and peridot, gemstones, tiny little things inside the comet. 
and we found all kinds of organic molecules, the very sorts of things we're made of. Scientists now believe that comets play a critical role in our universe. Where do the ingredients of life come from? Where were they all mixed together? Where did all this liquid water come from? Comets could hold a key to understanding the nature of life itself. But opportunities to study them up close are rare. Our comet is now moving at incredible speed toward a place where no spacecraft could ever survive. The sun. Four billion years ago, gravity hurled comets to the edges of our solar system. The same force can pull them back in. Our comet passes Earth and enters the most violent stage of its journey. It rockets toward the sun at 100,000 miles per hour. The surface of the comet is now sizzling, sizzling with activity, blistering temperatures are being created, enormous geysers of ice crystals and gas being shot off the surface. Jets are erupting all over the place. It's tumbling, the rotational state is changing, and the very surface is kind of cracking up underneath our feet. Inside the comet, pockets of gas explode and fling huge rocks into space. It's losing mass, it's shrinking. And as we get closer and closer to the sun and more and more of the volatiles are starting to come off of its surface, this can actually change the rotational state of the comet, it can make it tumble, it can actually even push it in its orbit. It can actually change the orbit of the comet. Comets can shed 50 tons of ice and gas every second. Enormous pressures build up inside the nucleus. It could become unstable. It could even break apart into pieces at any time. As comets reach their closest point to the sun, their existence is on a knife edge. Many will not survive. We've been able to actually see images of comets just getting swallowed up by the sun. And you can actually see them just pelting in there. And the whole body, whether it's a mile across or 10 miles across, just gets completely and utterly destroyed. A solar observatory recorded these extraordinary images. They show small comets called sun grazers diving towards the sun. Here, they're exposed to immense gravity and torched by the ferocious heat of the sun. Many are vaporized. Even in deep space, vast explosions can tear comets apart. In 2007, Comet Holmes was heading away from the sun when something extraordinary happened. In less than a day, it grew half a million times brighter. The cloud around it ballooned into space. It's actually relatively common for a coma, the fuzzy part around a comet, to expand large enough to be bigger than Jupiter, 100,000 miles across. But that can take days and weeks and months to build up. To have a single event, something that happened, boom, all at once, some catastrophe, to create this shell around comet homes that could be bigger than Jupiter is amazing to me. We had never seen something like this before. In fact, the coma of the comet was actually larger than the sun itself. Briefly, it was the largest object in the entire solar system, something that was unprecedented. Without warning, Comet Holmes blew apart. The largest cometary explosion ever recorded. The debris stretched for a million miles. What caused it is still unclear. One theory is that perhaps Comet Holmes slammed into an asteroid of some sort, creating this gigantic mega flare in outer space. 
Another possibility is perhaps the comet was unstable and perhaps there was an explosion caused by expanding gas and ripped the entire comet apart. At the present time, we simply don't know. The life of all comets hangs by a thread. Our comet survives its encounter with the sun, but it's paid a price. Its geography has been totally rearranged. Huge chunks, mountaintops worth of rock have disappeared. An object which could be perhaps 10, 20 miles across has lost literally hundreds, perhaps thousands of tons of rock and ice on its journey. As our comet leaves the sun behind, activity on its surface subsides. On its outward journey, a comet gradually begins to shut down. It becomes cooler, less active, the jets begin to turn off, the coma begins to blow away, and you're left with this little ball of ice and dirt. It returns to the depths of space, dormant once again. But the sun is just one of many challenges. Comets must also survive the gravitational pull of the planets. Our gravity is way too small to have any effect on this comet, but Jupiter is a very large planet. It has 300 times the mass of the Earth. If the comet passes within even a few million miles of Jupiter, that can change its orbit. The consequences can be catastrophic. In 1994, a comet called Shoemaker-Levy 9 flew too close to Jupiter. Scientists watch the planet's immense gravity tear it apart. The remains headed straight toward Jupiter. Many people thought that the impacts wouldn't do anything to Jupiter, that Jupiter would just sort of swallow it up without a burp. And that's not what happened at all. 21 comet fragments smashed into Jupiter's atmosphere. Each impact released more energy than all the world's nuclear arsenals combined. Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 was not a particularly massive comet, and it wasn't even a very dense one. It actually had the consistency of cotton candy. You could have pulled bits of it apart with your fingers. But this rather tenuous little icy creature created unimaginable destruction. The impacts hurled plumes of debris thousands of miles high and scarred Jupiter's atmosphere with dark lesions. The event rocked the scientific community. To actually see it for ourselves, to actually see the immense destructive power by an object that's really not that much bigger than a hill was really pretty terrifying. Even though we knew the math, to see it for ourselves was amazing. The Shoemaker-Levy 9 impact really woke astronomers up to the fact that impacts can happen now and they can happen here. If a comet just a few miles across hit our planet, the result would be catastrophic. Tidal waves would devastate the land. Debris would rain from the sky. Life as we know it would end. Yet comet impacts can also be a creative force. They could even trigger the birth of life itself.